Yeah, it is another episode of the Autumn Windbags. RJ Clifford, Juan Soto. Let's have some fun today. Uh, after a awful, shitty, crazy week for the Raiders with Henry Ruggs' tragic car accident. Shenanigans. Being an absolute dumbass. Uh, we still have some football, and there's no better cure for a bad week than the NFC least. We head to New York to take on the Giants, who are two and four. I'm currently in New York. I'll be attending the game tomorrow. Uh, we'll still figure out how we'll do our post-game show because I'll be uh, at uh, MetLife Stadium. But uh, Giants, two and four. We're on the road. Raiders coming out of a bye week, five and two. Um, oh and four after a bye since 2017. Um, the Raiders have a long history of being terrible after a bye or recent history of being terrible after a bye. And in back-to-back seasons, after great early season starts, we fell apart late and it would have to be an absolute like just tragic unfurling for the Raiders to lose to the Giants on Sunday. Uh, what is your level of concern, Soto, that the Giants or uh, the Raiders revert to old ways and shit the bed? Um, I mean, I'm always there's always that concern, especially with me, because fuck, I've, I've, I've been fucking. I'm like the redheaded stepchild of Raider fans. Like I've been beat so much, I'm just kind of used to it. Uh, well, your terrible Derek Carr takes. It's going to come with the territory. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm not quite sure if that's it. Um, I'm not. I'm not too terribly concerned. They're going to come out and and look bad. Okay. Uh, it's just you. You never know. It just that's a. Uh, there's and that's not a good record for West Coast teams going east and playing that early game. Yeah. Out of a buy or not, they just they don't necessarily perform their best uh raiders or, or anyone else so there's always that little concern there but i mean it, it we, we should win this game fairly handily i mean the, the the line is raiders minus three i i think we should cover that no problem well you let's look at the giants um so like this is kind of like and this is why i asked you that question soto because it's le- to me this game is less about all right x's and o's how can the giants beat that beat us like it's crazy to say it because, like, I, for all the things that I mentioned with the Raiders falling apart late in seasons, and, you know, the Raiders have been terrible the last 20 years, but there's no way the Giants beat the Raiders unless the Raiders beat themselves. That's it's really true. how I feel about this. Like, they they have eight defensive players on injured reserve just on the defense, plus safety, Nate Ebner and linebacker Lorenzo Carter are going to be injured and out. Uh, Saquon Barkley out, Sterling Shepard out, Kenny Galladay questionable, John Ross questionable. I mean, this is a this is a bad team ravaged by injuries. So this is a great. I kind I kind of like this soft litmus test of are the Raiders heads on straight with everything that happened with John Gruen three weeks ago, everything that happened with Henry Ruggs this week, all the adversity that this team has, has had to overcome. This is the best litmus test for it. Because if they can't beat the Giants, then this team has completely lost its mind. Yeah, this look, it, it, the off the field stuff is what it is. Derek Carr said at best is you have to really compartmentalize, and he, they've gotten really good at compartmentalizing things, mm-hmm. turning off those emotions, focusing on what they're doing. And oftentimes, I mean, I felt, and when I was going through a lot of stuff, burying myself in work, that really did help. And it, yeah. I performed well, and and uh, it's the on the field thing because rugs was such a big part of what we do. I think that um, he's going to be missed. Let's say on this one game snapshot a little bit more than even Waller was missed. I think that the level of backup that we have for Waller and and Moreau is a lot better than the level of backup we have in rugs in Zay Jones. Mm-hmm. And there's not, nothing to say anything bad about Zay Jones, which is just how good Foster Moreau is. Yeah. Um, and it's um, the the speed of rugs that opened up everything underneath for the offense. Um, the teams don't have to really focus on that anymore. They don't have yeah. to worry, focus on that, that guy that could take the top off and they could kind of, we'll see what happens, you know, um, when, when Carr doesn't have uh, a lot of that room to work with, I think he'll, he's accurate enough to, to be able to continue to move the ball the way he has been, but it's not going to be easy. 
and also to as a correction i know i told you they were so i'll take partial responsibility but the giants are actually two and six two and six wow that's right now here now here's the thing the two and six mark okay i understand you know you can close games here and there they have a minus 44 point differential minus 44. now watch yeah, that's, that's losing watch like that's losing by like five points a game average that, that's 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 yeah. losing uh, yeah well that, i mean not necessarily because you're actually winning games too it's just like if you win game if you win game by one point by one point okay i can see that but uh watch the football team as a minus 71. Eek. i was so happy when uh like when i was looking through the schedule preseason you're like ah afc north okay there's gonna be some tough games of course afc west tough games oh nfc east oh thank god okay Whew. all right i'll take it awesome uh, and this is one of the ones. So this is like when we were talking earlier, like the only really like the, the toughest road game that we thought preseason was going to be Pittsburgh, right? We were coming off a short week, going to the East Coast. I was like, all right, what's the other like right on the East Coast game? It was Giants. I was like, okay, it's after a bye. Giants are on a short week because they played the Chiefs on Monday Night Football, only lost by three, um, which is a great sign for when we play the Chiefs next week. Mm -hmm. Um this was again like this is a game that absolutely we should win. I, I feel like um, do the Raiders keep it simple and just kind of insert Zay Jones in the Henry Ruggs spot, or do you think Greg Olson and Derek Carr drastically alter the offense without the speedy Rugster? I, I think that they're they're going to somewhat alter the offense anyway because mm -hmm. they want to kind of make it a little bit more more s smooth for them to operate. And not okay. have to like just kind of uh, translate a lot of the Gruden stuff, kind of make it a little bit simpler like they were doing, but kind of solidify that across the entire playbook. Mm -hmm. From that sense, I see them just plugging Zay Jones in and seeing where where they go from there. I don't think they've had that uh, long of a run with Zay Jones to be able to show what he can do in that role. I think he's come in to spell guys here and there mm -hmm. or in larger packages, three wide, four wide, stuff like that. But uh, as far as him being, you know, the X or the Z, I guess. Z. Uh, Rug it, the, the Rug Zay Rug Jones for Z. I mean, yeah, the but you're right. Yeah, the, the three the three games that I looked at in the beginning of the year on the road game were Pittsburgh, this one coming off the bye, and and the Cowboys game. Even though it's not technically yeah. an East Coast game, it's still an early game. Uh, eh, but you know, we'll see. I uh, I I don't see the Raiders needing to do anything other than be themselves in this one. Yeah, um, I see the offensively. Them. offensively, I think they just they just just be themselves, right? Steady dose of Josh Jacobs. I like how we're doing less zone blocking, like less zone runs and more kind of just like gap runs. Just like all right, just hit that, just hit that gap, right? Just, mm. Like Kenyon Drake was like he looked so lost early in the season with his own zone blocking schemes because he had to like figure something out and he would just like. He would just come out of the backfield like tiptoeing and not sure what to do. And the moment he went to kind of just more just like gap runs, he was just like, oh, hit that hole. Okay, I can do that. Bam. Let me just be me. Um, more of that. A lot of Derek Carr intermediate passing. I think this is the game where Darren Roller puts up like sports center top 10 type type of game. Like a touchdown or two, 120 yards, eight, nine catches, something like that. Like he's been so quiet this whole season, but that's just because because not not quiet, but quiet by Darren Waller standards. Just because they've been spreading the ball around. Like Ruggs leads the team in 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 receiving yards. Uh, Brian Edwards is coming along, right? Zay, Zay Jones got a touchdown. Foster Moreau's got a touchdown. Uh, he's it's just been he's been quiet, but like kind of like, like what we like kind of what I predicted preseason. Like he'll be quieter this season, not because he's going to take a step back, but because the team's going to be better and there's just going to be. Um, you know, the ball spread around more. So without rugs there, I think this is like, like, all right, let's just go back. Let's, let's just go back to our comfort zone, right? Let's just fall back on our nice soft mattress, car, Waller. No one can truly cover Waller. Mm -hmm. I think this is, I think he's going to go over 100 yards receiving. I mean, I'm not saying he won't, but I don't think it's going to be for that reason. I think the comfort level has to be solely on car. If car is comfortable, everything's going to be fine. I don't think you have to make Waller comfortable or that's the, the security blanket. It's just whatever the defense gives you, Carr's going to take. Carr's going to take some of what he wants as well when he sees a good matchup. Um, if it's Waller, it's Waller. I, I don't necessarily think it has to be him. 
mm-hmm. um, with with the way the Raiders have been playing, um, it's really difficult for defenses to key in on something that is based off of what they're giving. You know, yeah. that, that's what Carr is taking. You know, he's not he's not running a specific scheme or this play is set up to get this many yards or to this receiver. You can game plan a lot easier on that, uh, especially when you have the tendencies that Gruden had. But I, I think that oh, what they're doing now is uh, very similar to, I said it uh, a couple of weeks ago, very similar to uh, the Peyton Manning in, in Indianapolis. They kind of just give him a concept. This is what's been open. Try to look for this. And he sees what the defense has. He makes the checks at the line, and and that's the play. Uh, I think that's that's the best bet for them um, going forward. And I just – I'm confident, but I'm like I'm like I'm like wary because I'm so confident in right. this game. Like this, uh, like this is this is how I felt at this point last season and the season yeah. before that, coming out of buys and mid season. That's why I'm worried because I'm not worried because this is exactly how I felt last time. It's exactly how it panned out. Um, yeah, I just think I think just like Raiders on offense, just bread and butter Raiders. Jacobs, 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 Carter Waller, Carter Waller, Car spread the ball around, Carter Waller. I think that's like. That's how you get your head on straight, right? Don't be cute. Just, you know, you got to buy, right? Don't be complacent. Everything with rugs, everything with Gruden. It's just like, go to your comfort zone, right? Like MMA fighters, when they're in trouble, like if they were, if like if they're a wrestler, they resor- resort to wrestling. They're a jiu-jitsu guy, they resort to, like, when you're in the fire, you kind of resort to, like, what got you there and what's your, what's your core, what you're about at your core. And mm-hmm. that's what the Raiders need to do. Just just be who, be who the Raiders are. Don't need to be anything cute. Um, I think Jacobs is going to have a big game too, mostly because I'm starting Kenyon Drake on my fantasy. So that means he's going to take a dump and Josh Jacobs is going to go off. It's kind of how it works. Uh, Defensively though, the Giants were... Before I move to defense, I want to talk something a little bit about you said about Jacobs. Okay. Um, Which he's fine. We're we're told he's fine, right? Yeah, he's fine. All good. I mean, nobody's on the injury report. Other than our guys on IR... Not a yeah. single guy on the injury report. Well, everyone practiced or 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 what made or John walked Benson's through. Fine. Waller's fine. Everything's yeah. good. I mean, uh, running backs a lot of times mirror their offensive line. So if their yeah. lo- offensive line is hesitant, the running backs are hesitant. When you look at uh, a zone blocking scheme, that's a, a scheme that fits best when linemen work well together and have known have known each other and we have played together for a long time because there's so many combo blocks and just it's not a set specific time where you hold this block for this many counts and then the, the, this guy scrapes the here or this guy scrapes there it's kind of like what the defender does and then the offensive lineman play off of that well yeah. then the running back has to play off of that if you do a more power blocking scheme it's set you block this guy or you block first color or you block this or you block that it's a lot more decisive and and it works it works better when an offensive line hasn't worked that much together and they don't have much experience working together because the roles are, are more defined uh, and the holes are more defined and the running backs know where to run as opposed to, like you said, a zone blocking scheme where it's kind of fluid with hold a hit. And, I mean, if the linemen are, are indecisive, that's going to make the running backs the same. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of, like, two running back sets, two tight end sets. Like, with rugs out, it's like, who would you rather have on the field? Foster Moreau or Zay Jones? I'd rather have Foster, right? I'd rather have Foster Moreau. Who would you rather have on the field? Kenyon Drake or Zay Jones? Pro- probably Kenyon Drake. And I'm a Zay Jones guy. Like, I think I, I love him on the Raiders. It's just, like, put your best players on the field, right? Like, yeah. still, like, you know, we'll, we'll run four verts and we'll we'll go wide and, like, we'll, you know, run trips and all that kind of stuff. And, and Zay will be fine there. But it's like, yeah, like, I'd rather have Foster Moreau on there than Zay, right? Like, that's put your best guys out there. Um, so defensively, the Giants are terrible against the Blitz. Atrocious. One of the worst teams in football against the Blitz. So I know uh, Gus Bradley blitzes less than any other defensive coordinator in football. Like literally, Raiders are 32nd out of 32 in blitzing. Um, the only blitz like 10% of plays. That should be bumped up to like 30-35 this game, especially in like third downs, passing downs. Um, they're just so bad against the Blitz, and it's like, are we really worried that Daniel Jones is going to like crush us deep if we play a little man to man or, you know, don't have the aren't in cover three. I'm not. Yeah. He, he's capable of doing it, but chances are it's he, he'll, he'll get a pass off here and there, but 
we want him to stay in the pocket. It, it the, our defensive game plan, from what I've put out, what I saw from from their games is they're very similar to the to the Eagles, mm-hmm. where you have a mobile quarterback and 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 Daniel Jones is a mobile quarterback. This guy yeah. can run. He breaks off runs regularly. I mean, I'm talking like 20, 30, even 40 yard runs. I mean, regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, if not every week, at least every other week. We always get running quarterbacks. Like it's that's weird, like the thing man. we're worse against, and we always get running. We always play running quarterbacks. So the game plan against against the the Eagles was to pressure Hurts, but keep him in the pocket because we know yeah. the more he throws, the more he's going to make mistakes, and he's more dangerous out of the pocket throwing the ball than he is inside the pocket. And that's the same with Daniel Jones. He's yeah. more dangerous when he's outside running around on broken plays. And it's not just against the Raiders thing. It's against – that's just it's, he's just better at it. If he's in the pocket, if he thinks he's on time, he's just not that accurate. He's going to turn, turn the ball over. He's going to try to force the ball. I think that this our defense, the Gus Bradley defense and secondary specifically, are going to really uh, frustrate Daniel Jones and force him into making mistakes. He's not that kind of guy that's going to dink and dunk his way down the field. He's gonna to want to go for go for broke and throw the ball down there. He's got a big receiver in Galladay if, if he plays. He has Ingram and you know he's got some bigger weapons. So he's gonna to want to push the ball, but he turns the ball over a lot. He fumbles a lot and he throws a lot of interceptions. Yeah, I, I this would be a nice. It'd be nice to get one of those big turnover games out of this defense. And again, like I'm, I'm not gonna complain about this defense at all. Like the fact that they're average based on like how bad they've been over the last uh, like decade. Um, like I, I keep like I, I always want like more out of the defense, but part of me is like, all right, like why are you like? It's like expecting your one year old to be able to swim. It's like uh, they're, they're treading water, like they're fine. Like this is like let it be. Next season we'll start demanding more and more, but it'd be really nice to get like a major like multiple turnover game. On and everything's kind of pointing towards that. Um, Giants run game terrible, despite the fact they have our boy Devontae Booker, who I'm sad we let go. Uh, he had more yards per rush last season than Josh Jacobs. By almost a yard, by a yard, yeah, more than a yard last season. Um, so with no Barkley, and I think their third string guy Brightwell is questionable too. So a lot of Devonte Booker, um, but they're not good. They're not. They're not good runners. So um, we'll see. We'll see a lot of Daniel Jones, and hopefully that means a lot of a lot of turnovers. Yeah, so Daniel Jones is their leading the leading rusher. He's yeah. got more rushing yards than Josh Jacobs does. <laughs> Josh Jacobs has 204, and he has two. And Jones has 241. Oh, that's and, nuts. And two touchdowns. Uh, but yeah, he's yeah. got. I mean, Daniel Jones passing. He's got seven touchdowns and five picks. Just, he's not that good. Yeah. Just, it yeah. is what it is. He's not. And that that's good. and that's and that like the the rushing quarterback is also kind of like the 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 downside of having two great edge rushers and Max Crosby on and Gakwe is they're like, Oh shit, they're coming on. They're, they're coming on the sides. It's like, all right, I'm just going to book it up the middle. Um, and that's, you know, that's going to happen when you have two great edge rushers, arguably the two best edge rushers in football, because they both lead in pressures. This is where Abram's going to come into play. Uh, I don't see Abram having a lot of responsibility coverage wise. So he's able to kind of be kind of a pseudo spy because his, his coverage responsibilities are, are usually, a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Perryman, he's a freaking missile too. Uh, he sees something. He's he's very instinctual. He's going to hit it. Also, if Jones if Jones wants to run, he better tuck that shit quick and take off. Because yeah. if he hesitates for a second, Crosby and, and Ngakwe have shown that they're able to you know catch up to um, quarterbacks from behind, and they're not going to stop. They're going to keep motoring until they get there. I'm I'm in a little bit of a quandary here, Soto. Um, right, let's hear it. My one of my like I enjoy this more than any human being really should. Um, but one of my favorite things to do on planet Earth is to sneak booze into venues where you're not allowed to like bring your own booze. Get the bum bottle. <laughs> because like you go to an NFL stadium, it's like eighteen bucks a beer. You know, like yeah, they so know expensive. they can chap you. Like like just the like. They know it, and I know it. It's like at least put some lipstick on before you fuck me. Like this is like so the fact that I can beat them, you know, they're like, hey, yeah. we're gonna overcharge you because we're your only option. No, no, I'm gonna sneak in booze and show you. It's like my own personal like double bird to the man. But I, yeah, I NFL I stadiums, do NFL stadiums don't even spit on it before they fuck you. They just oh, oh, yeah. they just throw it in there. Just raw dog. They're still on the phone, you know. Like they like they're, no cab money after. Like it's just blatant, right? Just blatant. Like it's concerts are the same way, blatant. 
And so normally what I do is I get one of those 350 milliliter like bottles that you just got to get a liquor store the plastic and, I one my, and I put it in a cowboy boot. I didn't pack cowboy boots. I don't know what I'm going to do here. All right. So I have a solution. I'm all ears. If you know a young lady who is uh, blessed. What do you mean blessed, Soto? What do you mean? Who's been blessed with uh, chesticular curvature? I'm I'm lost. What do you, so what, what is this chesticular curvature? You, you know somebody who's got who's got some big old titties. Oh, okay. okay. Now, yes, that makes sense. Not okay. in the middle so much, but on the side. The side here. Mm -hmm. I used to be married just to a young lady who was bountiful. Plus, yeah, who's bountiful. And, mm -hmm. and we would go to, to, to Dodger games a lot, and she would hide those bottles in the sides, and she would just mm -hmm. kind of put her arm down and walk. And since the, every, it's all plastic, yeah. the cap's plastic, everything's plastic, they're not going to find it. They're not going to freaking pat her down either. Just walk through yeah. the metal detector. You're good to go. Get yourself a Sprite. Drink about a third of it. Bam. You're good to go. All right. Because it, it's happening, Soto. It's just, just not, not going to be standard operating. Before, before, you, before you leave the, the fucking... Um, the hotel room, try it on the sides here. I'm telling you, you're not gonna be able to tell. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pat her up like she's like mewling coke through airports. You know what I mean? Like every like drug movie, they're like <laughs> taping like cocaine Dude, to like their legs and tits guts. are gonna be like this. <laughs> <laughs> she gets like two bottles on each side. Our entire section is going to be hammered because oh. the wife uh, the wife is here. She's gonna come with me to the game. She's gonna be mewling in so much whiskey. It's oh gonna be God. great. Good I may get in a fight with some Giants fans. We'll see. Because I'm going full Raider out. No, no incognito bullshit. I'm going full. Oh, you got to full silver and black. Uh, and we'll figure out how to do the post game show. Um, maybe I'll find like a bar with Wi Fi close by, and I can just I can pop on for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or maybe we'll wait till I get to the hotel. We'll figure it out. But uh, you damn well better be sure we will do a post game show uh, after the game morning game. It's weird going to be – it's weird like it's a morning game, but 1 o'clock because I'm on the East Coast. Uh, but hopefully this is a great a great statement game by the Raiders. All these troubles, all these problems. Coach is gone. Ruggs is gone. Controversy everywhere. And we just put on like a 42 to 10 curb stomping just to like, hey, 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 Raider Nation, everything's okay type statement game. It's – it should be what happens. The Raiders are the better team, regardless of what they've gone through, regardless of missing a player. I mean, look at it this way. I understand that the ramifications outside of football and the consequences outside of football are much more grave. So I'm not trying to minimize that whatsoever. But just think of it like he blew out his knee. Rug blew out his knee. He's yeah. going to be gone for the year. What do we do? Okay, well, we have to do something. We can't just be like, oh, ho-hum, the fucking year is over. You have to keep on moving and keep on playing. What, it, what that is, do we have the answer in-house? Is the answer not on the roster right now? Uh, dare I say OBJ or Deshaun Jackson or whoever? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? We, we, we've discussed it back and forth over what we, what we think should happen. But regardless of all that, we still have to play. And regardless of having rugs on the roster or not having rugs on the roster, we're still the better team. Even when everyone's healthy, we're still the better team. Uh, so we should go in there, and it should be one of those Eagles games where the Eagles weren't good enough. We go in there, we show them who we are, and we have a three-score lead late in the game. That's, that yeah. should be what, it, what, it, what happens. This fucking minus three is ridiculous. I yeah. think it's a fucking slap in the face. I think that uh, – we're being severely, and I mean, I don't blame, I don't blame Vegas for, for doing this because they go off of tendencies and they go off of history, and we've shown that we shit the bed coming off a of bye. But yeah. we don't have Gruden, we have, we don't have somebody who's so stubborn and inflexible that they're not going to change what they do. So hopefully, it's a lot better. I think it will be. Well, until it is better, and, and we'll see you at the post game show. Knock on wood if you're with me. 
Hey, windbags. If you want Darren Waller to catch 20 touchdown passes this season, don't be afraid to click those subscribe, like, share, and comment buttons. Plus, your comment could be featured in the next What Up Windbags.